I look at the watchers. The white people look away. On the right hand wall, a woman as black as old blood meets me with a stare. She has children, or maybe not anymore. I don't know her, but I know that much. Now I've told the truth and kept my third blood promise. Freedom was expensive for my country, and especially for me. I was unable to refuse silence of Billy and Titi. Not when I saw the way she twisted her body the day we were told of an amnesty period, a time for people to face without punishment, for true stories to be told by the ones most used to lies. The UN became our prince. I promised Titi our story would be told. Even if it hated to be me, and I wasn't served, confessing to murder would let me ever return home. Still, it was a blood promise, the third cut on my hand, and now it's done. I'm so tired and everyone's looking at me. There's one promise left to keep, and it's the blood promise I've made twice. Once again, I promise to return home. Home to fresh fruit every day, sun on ground, and trees that whisper more loudly now that we're free. Returning home was my second and my fourth blood promise, always coming in pairs, and the second part always following on a promise I wish I'd never made. The translator is sniffing quietly. She shouldn't be crying while she has other things to do. It's annoying. But she stops at last and talks to the official in English before telling me that finished. What happens now? I ask. I plan to keep my third promise and run away so I can keep the fourth. But I'm so tired. Since it hasn't been able to eat much lately, the food I left her will last a few days more. The official lowers his head to continue drawing dozens of circles all around his nose, wherever there's a gap. In the center of the paper is a list of my family, dead, mom, me, Petrus, dead Susanna, stillborn Esther, and silent teacher. Follow me, the translator, says the translator. She walks outside into the heavy air. I like it here in Italy, far from the cold of the mountains. Sometimes I think of Petrus at night, but I can't sleep with only Titi to warm me. I wet the mat with sleep on, but she doesn't mind. She puts her grabby hands onto the stain and then lowers her head so she can smell the stink. Just like the San Roman held a papa under his nose when he saw us. I picked up her filthy habits. We're always ready for soldiers now. Other children won't come near us, so I know we're safe. I followed the translator into a big metal box. It's one of the transport containers the UN brought to fill our empty streets. The floor is rigid metal, fluffy under my feet. There's a table and a chair, a fan blowing, and a computer. Is your sister sick? She gives me tablets in a bottle from behind the computer. These are vitamins, a little like having me. You and your sister should swallow one a day in the morning. Can you do that? Am I going back to her? She thinks. Are you able to? Who is she with? She's almost nine, I say. Almost nothing. Old enough to take care of herself. The translator opens her handbag and takes out a chocolate bottle, giving that to me as well. Excuse me. I'm not sure if I'm being rude. Do I need to go to prison? She stops with her head on, head on the door and shoots her head at me. I killed two people. Do you understand amnesty period, Maria? What it means? You're free, and if someone like Ramad came to us and told the truth, he would be free too. I shrug.
from. Monty can sit down. The fan prints toward me and makes me shiver. There's more, too, that you should know. How old were you then? Not even ten years of age? And you hadn't eaten for weeks. I don't think you killed Ramad. It's surprising he didn't come for you after what happened. Probably he died by other means. In my head's the words, my promises kept, my promises kept are certainly. I don't know if the words are about the way I told the truth in front of the bullet strangers, or the way I changed the life of Hassan Ramad's only girl for my crying sister. His blood for hers. But I killed the baby! Little sister, says the translator. She's beginning to sleep again, although she's crying not to. I lean back and hope she doesn't notice. It was an accident. You are no murderer. She says it again, carefully pronouncing the words until she sounds like an Indonesian to me. I know Dad would be cross. See me smiling at someone who blurred Indonesian on perfect. She sees I've understood and empties her bag. There's a hairbrush, a wallet that she trustingly leaves on the desk right in front of me, and a lot of pieces of paper. I can't promise you much, Maria, but I'll search for information on your parents and your brother for one month. If I find anything, I'll come and tell you myself. So you can know for certain what happened. After that, I'll go home to my husband and son. Unless she finds what she's looking for and glares at it. It's a razor. She opens her left hand on the desk and sighs a little. Then she screws up her face as tightly as it will go, just like Susanna used to. Make. She turns her head away while she makes a cut in her hand. Red is my blood, and fine is a spider web. This is my promise to you. My woman's bleeding starts for the first time as I walk home. I know what it means. If I want to, I can start a new family and make it bigger than my old one. People wave as I climb the last of the trail to our village. I'm smiling when I go inside to see Titi. She might talk again when she sees the chocolate bar I brought her. It's warm and squishy inside the package. Just thinking about it makes my mouth wet.